right, well, we just kick things off here. We'll just uh, give folks here a few seconds to, uh, to join us here. If you're just joining us now, this is the uh, Retro Tech webinar on residential duct testing. We're gonna do a, uh, a quick demo in here today uh, and just cover some of the basic processes of running a duct leakage test for a uh, residential dwelling. This is your first time uh, with one of our webinars here lately. Uh, this is my, uh, my lab where I do a lot of the virtual training. Uh, so as you can see today, we've got a Model 340X hooked up here to a ducted mini split. So we're gonna run a duct leakage test on that uh, a little bit later uh, in the presentation, but uh, first we're gonna kick off with uh, just kind of some basics on setting up a system, setting up a house, uh, things like that. Just the things you wanna get right before you actually turn the fan on and take a reading. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about automated testing and, and where that's gonna go here in the near future. But um, my name is Sam Myers, um, one of the trainers and internal building scientist here at RetroTech. Um, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here to begin with. So um, the test we're gonna show today is called a total duct leakage test. And I'll go ahead and maximize this here. Um, there's a couple of different tests we can do. There's total duct leakage where we're seeing all of the leakage inside of a residential duct system. And then there's what's called a leakage to outside test where we're only measuring the leakage outside uh, that's going outside of the building envelope. So um, we'll talk a little bit about um, how that works later. But um, <clears throat> before we really dive too deep into uh, setting everything up is, um, duct leakage testing is, is really important and it's, and it's important in you know, some houses more than others. Um, for example, I, I live here in the Southeast where we love putting ductwork up in hot ventilated attics or down in a ventilated crawl space. Um, and if that duct system isn't tight, that can cause some major issues. So uh, for example, um, if I have ductwork in a vented crawl space, vented crawl spaces are a gamble anyway. Um, it's easy to get temperatures below dew point uh, during the summer if you live in a warm, humid climate. You know, some of the issues that leaky duct systems can cause, uh, it can cause issues for the entire house. So for example, if I have a vented crawl space and I have duct leakage down there where uh, conditioned air is being uh, forced out of the supply system where it isn't supposed to, now we're really getting that, that, in, that uh, vented crawl space below dew point, which is gonna cause things to sweat. Um, not just the ductwork itself, but sometimes some of the framing members on the floor. And uh, I've seen several scenarios where the fiberglass insulation itself can sweat. Um, which can cause major durability issues to the house and uh, cause floor systems to rot and things like that. Not to mention the indoor air quality aspect of mold growth and things like that. So um, yeah, duct leakage can cause some serious problems uh, for some structures. So it's uh, important that we try to tackle this early on uh, in new construction, which is why we're starting to see it roll out in certain codes across the country. Um, should have happened before, but I guess better late than never. Um, some states are a little more ahead than others. So um, check with your local code to see if uh, you're enforcing it or not, if you're not sure. Sometimes certain jurisdictions within certain states will enforce it while others will not. So um, it's kind of scattered all over the board um, as far as code enforcement goes. But um, the same thing for, uh, you know, if we have attics and we have a return up in the attic and, um, you know, that's not air we want to breathe in. So if we have a leaky uh, return up in an attic and we're pulling that dusty attic air and now we're you know, distributing that throughout the house. So uh, yeah, we've seen uh, several scenarios where that's caused some um, COPD and um, allergy and asthma symptoms skyrocket because of that. And just by sealing that uh, return up in, the, in those uh, you know, vented crawl spaces or vented attics um, really help those symptoms a lot. So it's a big indoor air quality issue. So um, not to mention all of the energy efficiency part of this too. You know, we want this to air to go where it's designed to go and we want it to pull from where it's designed to pull from uh, inside the conditioned space. So uh, it's a, it plays a big role uh, for an HVAC system to operate the way it's designed to. So um, that's kind of the why. So now we'll get into the how. Uh, so basically what we're doing when we do a duct leakage test is 
we're sealing the system off. You can see these photos here on the screen. Um, there's a guy here taping up some supplies. Um, we're gonna tape off every supply and every return. And then we're gonna have our duct tester uh, connected, usually on the return side um, to a return register. Sometimes if we don't have one large enough, if it's a radial system, we can pull off the, uh, the um, access cabinet to the air handler and uh, attach it there. Yeah, so in the previous photo here, you saw uh, a tape being used. Let me get back to that. Um, this is a, a product that we sell. It's called Grill Mask. Um, it, the way I like to describe it is like a saran wrap on steroids. It'll stick and uh, keep a, a good seal over the registers um, and shouldn't peel paint off. I mean, if it's really fresh paint, maybe, but if it's been on you know, for a couple of days, it should be okay. But there's some other methods too. There's vent cap systems that work really well. These are reusable boxes that have a seal um, that you can use over and over again. So, um, so if you don't want to use the tape, uh, duct block is a, another one that works in similar fashion. So there's some, uh, some alternatives out there. Um, all of them work really well. It just depends on uh, which one you like the best. So I wanted to throw this slide out here. It's just a quick diagram just to show what's going on. Um, if you're familiar with blower door testing, it's a very similar process. We're just testing a smaller volume of space. Therefore, we need a smaller fan or we just, we just don't need as much fan power as a blower door gives off. So uh, the duct tester fan is much smaller, much lighter. Um, uh, we test building enclosures with a blower door to 50 pascals. But when we test duct systems, we test them to 25 pascals. And just like running a blower door test, we can test in either direction. Um, we can pressurize the duct system or we can depressurize it. I always like to depressurize the duct system because especially if we're using the tape, um, I don't want to apply pressure on the backside of that tape to pop it off. If I depressurize the system, I'm going to pull it tighter, um, less chances of that tape um, coming detached. That way I'm not having to run around the house to figure out what happened if I'm getting a weird reading. So um, I always pull a negative pressure on the duct system. Uh, but if for whatever reason you want to pressurize, um, you can do that too. So uh, as you can see here in the diagram, you know the ducts are sealed. We have them taped off here. And uh, we have our uh, flex that comes with the duct tester system attached to the return side. And then we have our DM32 manometer that you see here. Um, channel A is reading the duct pressure. So that's letting us know when we get to that 25 or negative 25 Pascal reading. Uh, and then channel B, where those uh, yellow and green tubes are coming out of, that's reading our fan pressure. And then the gauge is gonna calculate the flow from there. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. The, the longest part of this process is setting up the system, going around, taping up registers. Um, that's usually the, the lengthiest part. Uh, I say it takes usually about 30 minutes to set up a system and then about 30 seconds to run the test. So. Um, just make sure you give yourself plenty of time so you don't have to rush. Um, from my experience, God, I've probably done a thousand of these. If you rush through this, you're going to miss a supply somewhere. Um, so just take your time, go through the house, make sure you found all the supplies, all the returns, and that you have them all sealed. If you get to a house that has multiple systems, you're going to do two different duct tests. So uh, it's important to, if you can have a house plan, it's great, but I understand in existing homes, you don't always get that. So that's where you're going to want to take some measurements because the way that we report duct leakage is a percentage of the square footage that the system serves. So a lot of times code will require 6% or 5% or 4% uh, total duct leakage. And so that's what that means. So if I have a 6% target and I have a 1,000 square foot house, then 60 CFM is what I'm going to shoot for. Um, so it's good to know some, um, some of those details about the house that you're testing and seeing you know, what square footage one system serves and what square footage the other system serves um, to be able to get the, the right percentage numbers to report. Um, so yeah, so in this case, we're, we're depressurizing the duct system. Um, you can see these arrows are symbol, uh, symbolizing the airflow when, the, when we're running the test. So we're just exaggerating all the uh, unintentional leakage um, that's coming into the duct system on the supply and the return side. Uh, and so that's what we're measuring. And um, the leakage is usually found where one material is meeting another and it's not deliberately sealed. 
uh, for example, um, collars, um, collars off the trunk lines going to supply branches. Uh, another one is uh, that gap you might see between the sheetrock and a ceiling between the sheetrock and the return box or the sheetrock and the supply boot. That counts as duct leakage too. Typically we like to see that caulked or at least have some mastic around it to seal that up because that counts. Um, sometimes there'll be some leakage around uh, the air handler itself. Usually that's a, a pretty big culprit there. Um, so whether it's on the return plenum or the uh, supply plenum um, where that ductwork starts to begin, uh, we wanna take a, a good look at that too. And penetrations through the air handler itself where we have refrigeration lines going in, um, electrical lines going in, things like that. Sometimes a little extra caulk or some tape on those uh, will help us out quite a bit. Um, duct tape is not an air sealer for duct, uh, for duct work. Um, usually what we like to see where we can is uh, bucket mastic applied. And a, a good rule of thumb for that is you want it thick as a nickel. Um, Paint it on there. A lot of people don't like it because it's messy, but it's a lot better than the tapes. And that's how we get a good tight system every time. So uh, either that or a more expensive route that's you know equally, if not more so effective is uh, AeroSeal. That's a great product too. Um, but if we're doing a new install um, and we want to do it manually, go ahead and plan on using the bucket mastic because that's, that's how you're going to pass these tests every single time if you're an installer. Um, if you're, if you're relying on mastic tape and you're not applying that to a flush surface, it's just not gonna last. Uh, I've never seen that work well, uh, especially if you're going around collars and things like that, you wanna paint that stuff on. So um, that's how we get a good, nice system. So uh, there's uh, some important things we wanna do uh, before we start hooking up our equipment. We wanna set up the house, right? We wanna set up the system, right? So uh, we'll kind of play through this here. First thing you wanna do is turn the HVAC system off. Uh, you do not want that kicking on while you're running your test. The only thing that you want manipulating pressure on that duct system is your duct tester fan. That's it. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you from <laughs> when I was starting out in this years ago, uh, make sure you pay attention to ventilation systems that are tied into the HVAC system. For example, like, a, like an air cycler or something like that. Um, you want to make sure that that timer is disabled so that the ventilation doesn't kick on while you're running the duct test. Because think about what you're doing. You're sealing off all the supplies and returns. If you skip the ventilation, it's going to force that fan on and then apply pressure and it's going to have that air is going to have nowhere to go. So it could actually do some damage um, to some of the seals in there, or some of the seams that are made. Um, one time uh, this happened to me, uh, a ventilation system snuck up on me. Uh, I didn't see it. It kicked on and uh, the duct system was in a crawl space and it had a floating linoleum floor. And so when that ventilation system kicked on and everything was taped off, that linoleum floor started to come up and uh, yeah, it scared me to death. <laughs> but uh, I never forgot that again after that. So learn from my mistake and make sure you check for that. Um, especially in, in more high performance homes, you're going to see usually some type of ventilation system if it's done right, um, especially for tighter houses. So um, don't overlook that and make sure it's disabled. And um, also check and see what the standards are looking for for that ventilation system. Usually the only time you're going to tape off the termination outside of a ventilation system is if it's running 24 seven. Um, other than that, I mean, it should have its own sealed damper in there somewhere. Sam, uh, if you yes. had a sec for a question, that's sure. kind of a perfect segue into this. Um, yeah. Is it uh, because a, a system runs in positive pressure, is it better to test in positive pressure? And with negative pressure, uh, if a fan runs away, do you risk damaging the ducts? Uh, that was a question we received. Yeah, so, so the system runs in positive pressure on one side and negative pressure on the other. I mean, it's going to be one on pot on supply and one on return. Um, if we're looking at the static pressure of a system when it's running, ideally it should be at 0.5 uh, inches of water column. So that's uh, what 125 pascals. Um, if we're what we're doing, we're testing to 25 pascals. So we're testing at a much lower pressure 
than what that system usually sees. So um, no, at that test pressure at 25 Pascals, we're not gonna be doing any kind of damage, no matter which direction that we test. Um, so again, whichever way you wanna test is gonna be fine. Um, we just wanna make sure we get that entire system under that same uniform pressure. Um, doesn't matter which way, but yeah, 25 Pascals isn't gonna hurt anything. Um, that brings up a good point too. Um, as, as far as uh, mentioning, keeping the, the whole system in a uniform pressure, if you have zoned systems, you wanna make sure that any, all zone dampers are open. Because if they're closed, you could be closing off uh, a big chunk of that duct system. And you don't wanna do that. Um, when you have, this, uh, when you have a, a duct tester set up, the, uh, the, the blue tube off the DM32 on channel A is connected to the duct system. That's how we know when we get to that 25 Pascal pressure. Now, if we have that installed on a side of the duct system that's being closed off by a zone damper, it's gonna look like we have a massive hole in the ductwork somewhere because that side's not gonna be able to get the pressure. So for, for new systems that haven't been powered on yet, if you're doing testing at rough end, a lot of times you can run into this. Um, so uh, keep that in mind, zone systems, just make sure those zone dampers are open just because uh, you want all of that, uh, all of that pressure to be uniform all throughout. Thanks, Lee. Um, another thing we wanna do, we wanna either open a door or open a window uh, when we're doing this, especially uh, if we have duct leakage outside of the building envelope. Uh, the reason for this is if we're pulling air in through, du uh, through duct leakage outside the envelope, uh, then we're kind of slightly pressurizing the house a little bit. So we want to have that pressure somewhere to go so we're not getting weird readings off of our, um, our reference port on the manometer. So opening a door, opening a window uh, will help balance that out. So in this case, we just opened up a door. Um, also, yeah, we want to remove the filter or any filters that are in there. Um, again, we don't want anything restricting pressure. Um, throughout the system. So any filters that are installed, pull those out. Um, and then just keep them where they're visible so you remember to put them back in when you're finished. So um, yeah, that's just kind of some basic setup there uh, as far as getting the system installed or uh, at least getting the system prepped. And uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll cover... Um, Let's cover what to do on the gauge right quick. So this is what the screen looks like on your manometer. Let's, let's say we've gotten everything set up and we'll, we'll show this a little more. I'll switch cameras and we'll actually do this. But um, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to get a good view of the gauge whenever I run the test over here. So I want you to be able to see it here. Um, so this is a, a uh, program that we have that's for free, you can download from our, uh, from our website. It's called Virtual Gauge. And uh, you can run through simulated tests on it, or you can actually hook up a manometer to a fan and, and run tests from your PC if you want. But um, this is just a good way. It's a good teaching tool, too, if you want to you know, teach some of your folks in your company um, how to run through this equipment. But um, this is what your screen looks like when you power on the DM32. Um, before we do anything, we want to make sure that it's set up correctly. So on the screen right now, there is nothing correct about running a residential duct test. We don't have the right fan selected. We don't have the right pressure selected. We don't even have flow selected on channel B. So um, channel A, where we read our 25 Pascals will always be here at the top. Um, this is where, the, uh, where we're gonna read that 25 Pascal pressure. Our flow is gonna be read on channel B here on the bottom. Um, here we have a blower door fan selected. So we wanna change that to a duct tester. So all I have to do is just tap on it and that'll bring open the different ranges I can select or I can change device, which is what I wanna do. Um, and then I can cycle through, um, you know, we have our competitors fans on here too. Um, so there's lots of different options, but uh, the fan that we typically run, um, our newest model is the 340. Um, we have our older fans on here too and our commercial te uh, duct testers as well. But uh, here we're gonna choose the 340. That's the fan we're gonna use back here today. And we have these different range options here. Um, having the fan wide open, uh, if you guys can see me here, this is a, an older model, um, a training tool that we made. It's, a, it's got a clear housing on it, but 
Um, your ranges on the fan are here on the inlet side. So there's a plate that pulls off. So that's full open. The next one is 102. And what that means is this hole without a range plug in it is 102 millimeters in diameter. And then we have different plugs that would plug in from there. So essentially, the leakier the duct system is, the more open the fan is going to be, the tighter the duct system is, the smaller the range we're going to use. So if you're familiar with blower door testing, same principle, just on a smaller fan and on a smaller scale. And so we want to have the fan set up and whatever range we're going to use on the fan, we want to match that on the gauge so it's doing the math correctly. So if I'm doing a new construction house, um, say it's just for code, if I'm shooting for like 6% or 4% or whatever, range 74 is what I typically see. If I'm running the fan wide open, that usually means that's a leaky duct system. Um, so um, always, 74 is always a good starting point. And the way if I know if that's correct, if I choose 74 and I cannot get to 25 Pascals, that means I need to open it up more. Let's try 102 or let's try it open. Um, if I'm using 74 and I get to 25 Pascals, but I'm not getting a flow, I'm just getting two dashes on channel B, then that means I need to go down smaller. That means that's a really tight duct system. That's good. Um, so let's go down to the next size range um, or the next smaller size. Um, so here we're reading inches of water on both channels. We don't want that. Um, so a quick way to go into the settings is just to chat, uh, tap on channel B. And so uh, channel A, we want to read pressure in Pascals. And then for uh, channel B, we want to read flow in CFM because we're reporting this at uh, CFM at 25 Pascals. And I can just tap the power button to go home. So now we're set up right. Um, we can do, uh, we have our Pascals ready. And then we have our CFM ready. And then to actually run the test, once everything is set up and I'm ready, I just tap set pressure, enter my 25 Pascal target and hit set. And then off I go. So on this uh, made up test here, we got 62.5 CFM. Um, now I mentioned before that we like to report this as a percentage, right? Uh, so the gauge can actually do this for us. And uh, I can do that by tapping on, well, the first thing I wanna do, if I go into my settings, I can click area. And here we're ref uh, referring to the floor area. So we'll just, we'll just say this is a small uh, 1000 square foot house. So we'll leave this, we'll hit set. And then we'll go back into our flow uh, options here. And if I choose CFM per 100 square feet and go back, that's my percentage. So 6.24. Um, if I'm shooting for 6%, it's a little bit too leaky. Maybe I want to go and see why it's failing. Um, make sure all of those uh, return boots are, are sealed to the drywall. A lot of times I see that get missed quite often and it adds up to be a pretty big hole um, and things like that. So um, just making sure all those connections have a good seal. Maybe check a few um, start collars, make sure they have mastic on them. Check around the air handler, see if there's anything obvious there. Um, you can use a, a smoke emitter like this. Um, if you pull a negative pressure, you can ramp the fan up a little bit, go up to 50 Pascals and see if it gets sucked in anywhere. So um, just a way to spot check around. So um, that's how I get my percentage there. Um, that way I just don't have to do any extra math. As long as I know the uh, square footage, I can enter that in the gauge and it'll tell me what it is. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll do this. I'm going to stop sharing and switch cameras. Lee, do we have any more questions while I'm going to transition here? Um, no, but I was going to add something really quick. And um, just in addition to uh, what you were saying about selecting the right range, where you try a range, and if you can't get to test pressure, you want to, get to go to a larger range. And if you're not getting a result, you go to a smaller range. Um, you can actually skip 102. So 102 is a range, but it's completely covered by open. So like open reads a higher flow and a lower flow than 102. Um, we never, we didn't intend 102 to be a range originally, but we added it in um, just so you don't have to remember to skip it. Uh, but if you're thinking about it, if you go from open down a range, you can just jump right to 74. So just a, a little tip there. Cool, thanks Lee. So it completely gets overlapped. Um, so you can just go from open to 74, good enough. Um, 
so yeah, here you can see we have the duct tester set up um, on the return side of this air handler here. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod here so you can get a better look at things. But uh, before I do that, um, this is what the grill mask looks like that we use. It just comes in a roll, you can peel it off. It comes in three different sizes, um, eight inch roll to 12 inch to, I believe it goes to 16, um, 14 or 16 inch. So three different sizes you can choose from. Um, I like to use the smaller one for just, you know, residential supplies. Um, you usually don't need as much tape for those. Um, another thing too, um, I'll go ahead and show you this. This is the flange that comes with this model 340 here. And so it's clear. And then it has these two adjustable hooks. They kind of have, uh, let's see if I can get you in closer here, a spring you can push in and then you can hook it onto the return grill that way. So we made it like this so that when you have a return in the ceiling, you can just hook it on and then, uh, then you're good to go. When you need to go tape around it, uh, you don't have to hold it with one hand and tape it with another. You have uh, both hands free to tape. So um, this actually came from customer feedback. You know, back in the day on the old systems, it was just a solid flange without the hooks. And, you know, you had to kind of struggle to use your hands to get it taped on. And it was usually one of the most frustrating parts of the duct test. So this was our answer to that. So uh, now these come with every system. That uh, the grill mask sizing, it's uh, eight, 12 and 18, I believe. Eight, 12 and 18. Okay, cool. Thanks Lee. Um, so the gauge is already hooked up to the fan. Um, here, I'll bring you guys a little closer here so you can really see what's going on. There we go. So I'll show you the gauge. Um, there's a magnetic plate here on the, on the fan. These are on the new model. So the gauge is magnetic. There's a metal plate on the fan, just sticks on there. We put that there so you don't have to you know, leave the gauge on the floor for somebody to step on. Um, it just keeps it out of harm's way. So it's just a good way to keep it safe, make it last longer. So this is our channel A tube here. So the blue is always gonna go to the duct system. And usually you're gonna wanna install that on the first supply coming off the air handler. Uh, you can see the rest of my supplies are taped and sealed, so we're ready to go there. And then uh, I've got my reference hose uh, going up. Uh, that way the system knows when I'm at that 25 Pascal pressure. The rest of the tubes on channel B here, um, yellow goes to the yellow port, green goes to the green port. We have matching ports on the other side of the fan. So green to green, yellow to yellow. Uh, that's about as easy as we can make it. <laughs> um, we also have this cat five cable that you see here um, it comes in at the top of the manometer there we go and then it comes in to the end port um, so it's getting data in from the gauge uh, we have this so that you can actually use the manometer as the controller so once you enter 25 pascals and set it kicks the fan on automatically you don't have to use this manual dial um, so it just kind of streamlines the process there. Um, we also have the power plug here where that plugs in and the power switch to power the fan on. A lot of times if you run a duct test and nothing's happening, usually you forgot to switch it on. So make sure you do that. And um, you're probably guessing why we have another uh, Cat5 port here. This is usually used for blower door testing. Um, you can daisy chain fans together to get more fan power uh, if you don't have enough. I've never seen anybody do this for a duct test. If you put one of these fans on and it's set up correctly and you're not getting to 25 Pascals on open, that's a super leaky system and there's really no need to investigate further. <laughs> you should be able to find what's wrong with it. Uh, there should be some big holes somewhere. Lots of times when they fail that bad, we see uh, people try to use floor cavities or uh, stud bays as, duct as part of the duct system and it's just extremely leaky. So. Um, usually that's going to be a red flag that that system's going to fail if you see something like that. But um, for running a duct leakage test for residential, you're never going to use this port. Just make sure you plug it on the inside because it's getting data in from the gauge. Uh, let's see here. You can see we have our flange hooked up over here. It's uh, hooked into the grill and we've got our grill mask taped around it. And then another thing that I like to keep uh, in my uh, 
duct tester case, it's a roll of painter's tape. And the reason for that is, is whenever I hook up my reference probe to a supply grill, you can see that I have some taped around the uh, static pressure probe. Uh, each kit comes with a static pressure probe. Uh, you just poke a hole in the tape with your finger, run that static pressure probe in. So it's kind of pointing uh, downwind or upwind. Doesn't really matter. It's not really reading velocity pressure. It's just reading that static pressure. And then uh, I like to use that painter's tape just to tape around it and make sure it's secure, especially if I have uh, supplies in the ceiling, it's not gonna fall out and it's gonna seal around the hole that I made to put the probe in. So uh, just makes things easier, make sure it's not gonna fall out because if it falls out, then you're not gonna read anything on channel eight. So um, that's just an extra little tip that I always like to tell people. So we'll go ahead and put you guys back on here. It, Sam, real quick, why, why, yeah. why uh, while we're talking about the setup, um, sure. can you explain the rationale of putting the blue pressure tube in the first register of the system? Yeah, um, I know the ResNet standards require that. Um, and it actually makes things easier because that's less tubing you usually have to run if the return is also near the, uh, near the air handler too. But um, the goal of, of what we're trying to do is to ensure that we're getting pressure uniformity across the system. Um, and so the, I think one thing that they want people to do is just to have some uniformity across how tests are done. So, um, you know, if, if everybody's putting that probe in the same place and that kind of keeps the test at an even playing field. But, um, you know, some people argue, well, well, you know, the pressure may not be 25, you know, further down the line. Well, you know, maybe, but it won't be too far off. But uh, in reality, from what I've seen, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Um, but that's what the standards call for. Um, Lee, if you have any more to expand on that, feel free to go for it. I, I think you nailed it. And, um, you know, just the opposite, if you were to put it in the furthest register away, then you have a chance that the first part of the system is at quite a bit higher pressure than the end of the system. So you're going to get sure. more leakage measured. Uh, but yeah, it's mostly driven by the what the standards require. So that's why we uh, recommend the first register. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Um, so, okay, what I'm going to do is turn the fan. Usually when I run a test, I try to get this flex to be as straight as possible. Um, I don't want to put any U-turns or anything like that. I don't want it bunched all up close to the return. I want to kind of have it spread out so I have some good laminar flow in here. Uh, but today I am going to have to kind of huck it at a 90 degree angle just to maybe hopefully let you guys see the screen here, get rid of some of that glare. I know it's really small, but that's why I went over it on the computer first so you can kind of see what it is. And then, you know, we'll see what this thing tests out at. So let's just say um, I've turned the HVAC system off, which I did. It's off. It's not going to kick on. Um, this one does not have any uh, ventilation tied into it. So uh, there's no controls there that I need to go hunt down to figure out uh, if there's a timer or something like that that's going to kick that fan on. Um, we'll say I've opened a door uh, to balance out the room or to balance out the house um, should it get pressurized by uh, the fan running. So uh, now I'm all set. Um, I have my power switch on, she's plugged in. Um, there's a green status light over here to say, yes, you have power. Um, if the status light is ever blinking, I know you can't see where I'm pointing, but it's just a little green light. Um, if that's ever blinking, that means it's not getting a signal from the gauge. So maybe it means you forgot to plug your data cable in. Some people make the mistake of plugging it in the bottom of the gauge instead of the top. The reason why we have a jack here at the bottom is if you're going to connect the gauge to a laptop to run software that way. So that's strictly for connectivity um, to use with software. The top one is to communicate to the fan. So it's always going to go in the top. So if you ever see that status light blinking, that means something's either hooked up wrong or maybe your data cable's gone bad. Um, it could mean that too. Sometimes that happens. So um, this is a good little indicator there to show if something's wrong. Um, so I'm set up correctly here. I've got my model 340 set up here. I'm on range 74. Um, I can show you um, on these retro techs, uh, the flex just pops off like that. There's nothing you have to undo to get it off. 
And then there's my plate and uh, there's my range 74 that you might be able to see there. And this is just magnetic and it sticks on. If I wanted to flip the fan around to pressurize, I could. All I have to do is flip it around, same diameter um, on the outlet side, and I would just snap it on that way. I don't have to change anything about my tubing. I don't have to install, uh, same manufacturers make you install a uh, flow straightener. Um, we don't do that. Uh, this is a centrifugal blower instead of an axial style fan. So um, the flow is pretty balanced. So the only difference in pressurizing or depressurizing with this system is which way the fan's facing, that's all. Everything else still hooks up the same. So I'll flip her back around here and we'll depressurize. So we'll hook her up to the inlet side. Try to get rid of some of that glare there. There we go. So I'll hit set pressure and then I'll just enter in 25 and set. Here it's starting to kick on. Um, another nice thing about these fans is they're pretty quiet. They don't make a whole lot of noise um, if they don't have to wind up too much. And uh, I can see I'm about at 19, 20. She's slowly getting up to 25 Pascals. Looks like I'm gonna come in probably a little over 60. Pretty similar to that uh, demonstration we just did on, on virtual gauge on the computer. It looks like it's gonna be a, almost the exact same result. Yeah, about 62, 63 CFM is what we're seeing. And again, if I wanted to change that to a percentage, I can go to CFM per 100 square feet. And yeah, I'm a little over 6%. So I left this system leaky on purpose just so I could demonstrate how to find leaks, you know, with a smoker. So, um, so yeah, this one's a little bit leaky, but uh, most codes are going to be usually 6% or lower. And then uh, and to turn the system off, all I have to do is just hit stop. Or um, if I wanted to uh, hold the reading, I can just tap on channel A. That holds it. And I can hit stop. And it still has my reading there. So, you know, if, if the fan was running really, really hard, um, I could hold the gauge reading, turn it off, and then talk to a client about it um, without having that background noise. But like I said, usually these fans are pretty quiet. And then uh, I can just tap channel A again, and it, it goes back to zero. So. Like I said, the, usually the lengthiest part of running one of these tests is the setup. Um, not really this system, because there's only three supplies and one return. Um, but for, for most houses, you have to kind of go around and see where they all are and make sure you don't miss one. And um, like I said, usually about 30 minutes to do that. Um, you know, once you get this figured out and uh, get a rhythm down that you like. So that's the, the quick and dirty on, on running a test. Uh, I'm going to go back up here and switch cameras. Lee, did any more questions come in? Uh, does not look like it. Okay. Cool. So switch back to the main one here. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen again. And pull up this PowerPoint. So you saw the DM32 display. Um, it's worth mentioning that this is going to change. Um, there's a new gauge that's going to be coming out here very soon called the DM32X. Um, we, we've had an app out for several years, I think since 2016, called rCloud, that you can run, um, you can connect your phone or your tablet to the DM32 via Wi-Fi. And then, uh, yeah, and then uh, run an automated test that way. So um, it'll collect every bit of data about the test and you can generate a report and save it. So you can save it for your own records, give it to a client, give it to a code official, uh, geolocates where you are, um, pulls outdoor weather data, everything. So one of the biggest challenges though that people have had with it in the field is simply connectivity. Um, the Wi-Fi has been limited to about 50 feet. Um, so if you get too far away from the system, you can lose connection. And then um, 
you can do tests without being connected to the internet and then you can upload them later. Um, however, there's still been some connectivity issues that way. So what we've done to fix that on this new gauge is we've just built our cloud into the gauge. So now there's, uh, there's no need to connect to anything. It's just built in. But yeah, this is, this is the home screen when you turn on the DM32X. And so you've got different apps you can choose from. Our cloud is one of them. Um, so now you don't have to pair it with any more devices um, once this gauge comes out. So I can just tap on that and our cloud launches and I can just run it straight off the gauge. Um, and it's as simple as that. I don't need to connect it to anything. Uh, so if I wanted to run, and this, this is how the, the app looks now. So if you've never used our cloud, you, if you have a DM32, you can download it and try it out. It, it's, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. And, um, and give it a shot that way. That way you, can, you don't have to write anything down. It's nice, there's no need for a pencil and paper. Um, taking screenshots of the gauge, stuff like that. Um, you can just generate your report and off you go. Um, so if I wanted to run a duct test in this, there's a plus sign down here in the bottom right hand corner. And I've got some options of some different tests I can do. I can run blower door, duct test. I can test exhaust fans. So here we're doing duct tests. Got some different options I can choose. ResNet, um, California's Title 24, or just do a test for code. Um, anytime we run a, a duct test, it's just going to be a single, single point test. And then it's just going to ask me how I'm going to run it. Depressurize or pressurize. Um, the leakage percentage uh, CFM per square, uh, 100 square foot is less than or less than or equal to. Um, we can just say, you know, six is usually a, a number that we commonly see. And then that's where it's gonna ask for the uh, volume of the structure that we're testing. And so essentially what we're doing here is just going through the motions. It's gonna ask me for the address. Um, it's gonna ask for some building information, verify that address. Um, and then the weather conditions. And so on the app that's available now for the DM32, it's gonna take some time and make sure there's connection to the gauge and all that. Since this is built into the DM32X now, it doesn't really have to do that. You just go straight into the test after this and uh, start recording data, you know, once you're ready to go. And so, um, yeah, it's a nice new feature that we're excited to announce and introduce here um, within the next month. But um, if I go back to this, yeah, the, uh, the actual gauge interface is very similar to the DM32 uh, that you see here. You know, the channel A and channel B are oriented in the same places, it's up and down. It just looks a lot sharper. Um, we've got photorealistic images here of the different ranges and the different fans. Um, instead of having to push a button to cycle through, you can just scroll like a smartphone. Um, it's got a 1080p OLED display with Gorilla Glass, so it's super durable. We've done a lot of drop tests on it and have been impressed with how it's held up. And, um, you know, I showed you that feature for holding the result, you know, on the DM32. Here you have to tap the uh, channel A. It's kind of like a hidden feature. Here we actually have a button for it, so it's easier to find. Um, so, yeah, there, if you wanted to ramp your speed up with a speed dial down here, you can. And uh, there's an indicator to show that the fan should be running. So this is how things are, are going to change here in the very near future. Um, if you wanted to graph your results too, the, there's also a button to do that. So yeah, you can, um, you can uh, graph any changes that are made. So if you're, you know, if you're sealing the system or something like that, you know, in real time, you can actually see how much it drops. If you wanted to you know, record that, you can. But uh, that's a feature that we put in. Probably going to be used more for uh, data collection and blower door testing more than residential duct testing. But um, yeah, if I go home here, uh, this third app uh, that's in here is uh, it's a resource app. So we actually have you know how-to videos. So like the stuff we covered today, setting up the house, setting up the system. If you have if you're in the field and you're new to this, or if you have folks in your company that are just brand new to it, they can actually learn you know, right off the gauge. So um, they can watch videos on, you know, how to, you know, what's in the kit, what should be in there, you know, how to set up the, uh, how to set up the house, how to set up the, yeah, so there you go. So there's videos just uh, built right in that doesn't have to be connected to the internet. It's actually built into the device. So just to show you what to do, the manual's all in there. The quick guides are in there too. If you don't want to watch a video, you can just kind of look at it at a quick cheat sheet. 
to, to see how to get there. So it's just a, a quick rundown on that. But um, yeah, so there's some different options you have. You can run the test manually. Um, you can run the test with software with the R Cloud app. Um, we also have, you know, Fantastic on a laptop, which I still know of a couple people that still do that. Why? I don't know. R Cloud is so much easier and you don't need a laptop, but and you have options and, you know, everybody has their own flavor that they like. Um, before we get close to the end of the hour here, there's a couple more tips I wanted to throw your way. Um, testing at rough end, sometimes if you're, this is at the rough end stage of construction. So if you do a lot of new construction testing, um, these are some things that I've found in my experience that have helped quite a bit. Um, since you don't have, uh, you know, grills and registers in yet, you can actually make some foam plugs out of couch cushions and reuse those and just plug them up. It works fine. Um, you don't really have any leakage through there that's significant. Um, so that's kind of a, a cheap and easy way to, you know, avoid some tape costs there if you wanted to. Um, we also make a cable. Um, if you, uh, sometimes for new construction, getting power can be tough. Um, I've had some instances where the temporary power pole was really far away from the house and my extension cord wouldn't reach. Um, so we make, a, there's a company that makes a, um, a battery for electric bikes and we made a cable for it um, to adapt to it. So you can just power your fan off a battery if you want to. So um, that can be handy. Uh, the company is called Leaf Bike that makes the battery. Uh, my friend Aaron Martin in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, sent me this picture of his. So um, that's how he runs his tests for a lot of new construction jobs. And we just make the cable to plug the battery into the fan. And uh, yeah, it works really well. Um, another struggle that you'll see sometimes, you know, with that clear flange that we have, it only really works well when you have a grill to attach it to. Well, in new construction, you don't have one installed. Um, well, at rough end anyway. So one thing that I've found is crawl space tape. Um, this is the white vinyl tape that's usually used to seal vapor barriers in encapsulated crawl spaces. Um, I like this because it sticks to wood and it sticks to mastic really well. Um, usually if the installer does a good job getting everything sealed up, you're going to see mastic everywhere. Um, a lot of times it gets on the rough framing around the return box. Um, your grill mask isn't going to stick to that. Uh, duct tape doesn't stick to it well either, but this stuff does. Um, here's an example um, of a test that I did a while back. Uh, this is white mastic that you see around the edge here. Most tapes aren't going to stick to that. And it's just going to, your, your setup's just going to fall down every time. And so I took the crawl space tape and went around it like this. And, uh, you know, wherever I could cover with the rest, I used my grill mask. This is back when we had the blue stuff. Um, the yellow stuff now is, is essentially the same. It just, it's our colors and has our logo on it, but this is what it used to look like before we did that. And then uh, I just made a little cradle here out of the uh, crawl space tape and set my flange in that way. And uh, in this particular house, I walked around and I shot some videos and it stayed up for two hours easily, no problem. So uh, if you do a lot of these kinds of tests at this stage of construction, a roll of that tape is really nice to have on you. Um, so you don't have to keep figuring out a way to keep this from falling down. Um, it's kind of what the whole setup there looked like. So um, I know today we talked a lot about uh, total duct leakage, but I mentioned before you can do leakage to outdoors. Um, I'm not going to do a demo on this. If you guys are interested in seeing a demo on this, let me know. We can do a web we can do a, another webinar strictly on how to do this. I can do it here in the lab. But um, this is when you run your uh, duct tester with a blower door. So you want to get the house in uh, 25 pascals, and you want to. We'll say negative, we'll depressurize. We'll get the house to negative 25 pascals and then we'll get the, uh, the duct system to negative 25. So the two fans are working together so that the only leakage you're reading on your duct tester is that leakage from the outside. Because since the house and the duct system are at the same pressure, any leakage to the inside is now getting uh, neutralized. So it's not counting any of that. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, method, two is the most common. Um, what method one is, is where you're actually tethering the two manometers from the blower door uh, and the duct tester together. You're both referencing them to the outdoors off of that uh, duct tester um, reference tube to the outside. Um, and you get them both to negative 25. Uh, the other way to do it where you don't have to tether them is when you get the blower door to negative 25 and then you just get the duct tester to zero. 
Um, a lot of people like this method better just because it's less tubing. You don't have to team anything off and you're getting the same result. So um, um, the only time I would use method one is if I want to record the results in R cloud, um, because in R cloud, I can't seek to zero Pascals. I have to seek to 25 um, in the app to do a duck test. So um, then I can just make a note uh, on that test and say, hey, this is leakage outside with a blower door. Um, just to let the official know if, if that's what I did, if that kind of test is allowed. A lot of times when people like do a leakage to outside test, um, if the code allows it, it's easier to pass because you're canceling out some of that leakage, right? Um, so you're going to get a lower number. So uh, if they don't pass a total duct leakage test, sometimes they'll charge a little more and say, okay, we'll do it again and pull out the blower door and see if you pass that way. Um, so that's a lot of times where this type of test is used. Um, before we take any more questions, um, there's a really nice new resource out that I wanted to share with you guys from uh, my friend, Allison Bells. If you haven't seen it yet, he just came out with a book called A House Needs to Breathe or Does It? And uh, it's a really nice intro to building science um, that's really geared towards contractors that are trying to learn this stuff. So if you are a contractor or if you work with a contractor, there's finally a really good book out um, to really cover the basics of this. Talks a lot about what we talked about today and in our current webinars, so highly recommend it. Um, he does a great job with it. If you don't know who Allison Bells is, um, he has an, uh, Energy Vanguard. So he's had a blog out for a long time. I use a lot of his articles when I work with clients uh, to help explain things. He just articulates building science really well for anybody to understand it. So. Um, if you're looking for a good resource on communicating this stuff to, uh, to builders and contractors or trying to learn it yourself, awesome place to start. So it's hard not to mention that since it just came out uh, a few days ago. So um, with that, uh, we're getting close here to, to three o'clock Eastern at the end of our hour. Um, Lee, do we have any more questions in the box? Uh, yeah, there was a question about um, if the DM32X is going to be available as a firmware update for the DM32s. So uh, um, if you have one there, maybe we should show that physical device and uh, talk about how that differs. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, let me, probably be easier if I go back to the other camera. Yeah, so it will not be a physical update to the DM32. Um, it is a totally different product. Um, wow, that is really, there's a big glare there coming off. Sorry about that. Let me... Uh, See if I can dull that. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot thinner, totally different screen, totally different guts, um, different pressure ports. Look the same on the top, but they connect differently inside the gauge. It's USB-C on the bottom. Has speakers so that when you play the videos, you can hear. Uh, yeah, so it, it's just a far, far, far more capable gauge uh, than the DM32 is. Um, so yeah, uh, it's really, you know, to get the features off of this, you have to have the actual physical gauge. And uh, if you have a second, you should hold up the two side by side so you can see the, yeah, let the me, OLED uh, screen is just um, like it's a lot so sharper, much brighter, and you know, yeah, sharper. I know on these uh, these cameras, it's uh, the screen's so bright it's creating a glare. <laughs> yeah, that one thing with the DM32 is it, it can be hard to read if you're not directly yeah. in front of it. Um, but, um, definitely yeah, don't have that problem. I mean, essentially, in the DM32, this is what you get: this display that you have um, with the DM32X. We're able to build our own apps in for it for learning. Um, we'll have new calculators built in here um, to help figure things out on the fly in the field. Um, yeah, it's just really an endless amount of possibilities that we can do with this thing now. So the DM32 actually turns 10 this year. It's been out for a decade. Um, so we've learned a ton since we uh, first came out with this. This was the first uh, wireless uh, touchscreen gauge that ever hit the market. Um, so as we've, you know, picked up feedback and learned things and new technology has come out, um, this is what we've been working on over the past few years, uh, to really take things to the next level. It'll still have the wireless capabilities, upgraded Wi-Fi, long range Bluetooth on it as well. So, um, yeah, just totally, totally different animal than what the current DM32 is. Yeah. Great question there. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, that, I think that is it as far as questions go. Okay. Well, um, if you guys get into more of this and you do, um, 
you do come up with questions, you can usually get up with Lee by reaching out to support at retrotech.com. I'm Sam at retrotech.com. If you have questions for me, um, I'm happy to help and um, appreciate everybody joining today. And again, um, feel free to reach out to us if you ever have any questions about anything and uh, we'll catch you back here again next time. Thanks. <laughs>